what he wanted to do. Are we all ready? Are we all ready? Okay. I'm sure. Hi. Welcome, everybody. Um, if you read what was in the book and what was online, my description, part of what got me thinking about this is a coworker from many years ago was talking about recycling, reuse, reduce, you know, all the, the green stuff. And I mentioned that we burn our trash. Well, it's not that much trash that we're burning, but he kept going on that it was such a terrible thing to do. I said, well, I know how we could solve that problem. There would be no more pollution if we all stopped breathing. He didn't think that was a good idea, but it stumped him, and he didn't say anything else. <laughs> but sometimes some of the ideas people come up with are just about as brilliant as that. I did uh, come across a diagram online talking about how to, um, what's most cost effective, and of course at the bottom is simply learn about how to go green. <clears throat> Going up from there, the next one talks about temperature settings in your house. Yes, you can lower your room temperature, and that will save on some either electricity or fuel or propane or natural gas or whatever you're using, electricity. But if you lower your temperature, you better be prepared to wear a sweater or a jacket of some kind because you're going to get cold. And that's one thing I refuse to do is be cold in my own home. But for me, a comfortable temperature is 75. I don't go that high, but when it's summertime and I'm sitting out inside in the sun, that's where I'd like to be, at least 75 or higher. We have a grandson whose internal thermostat doesn't work very well and anything over about 60 or 65, and his face starts turning red. So you not only adjust it for yourself, sometimes you have to adjust it for other family members. So when I go to their house, I know I better take something along to keep warm. <clears throat> one of the other things that it said on one of the lower levels was to unplug portable devices. Well, I keep hearing these advertisements of unplugging your charger when they're not charging anything. Our son had one of these, so I thought I would try it and see. So I plugged my charger into it, but not my phone, just the charger itself. And it was on for like 24, 48 hours. It never registered anything. The most you're going to get is a little LED light saying, yes, this is plugged in. So. Unplugging all your chargers, I'd lose them. You know, why am I going to unplug them? If I leave it plugged in where I know it is, it's not using enough to register on this. Uh, this, by the way, came from Home Depot. And uh, you can reset it, you know, to measure various things. We do have an electric heater in what I fondly call my greenhouse. And I'm sure if I plug this in, the numbers would be going pretty fast because I know what it does to our electric bill. But if I want to have my greenhouse and I want to have plants that survive the winter, I've got to use it. So it's oftentimes what makes sense is cut down here on the use of something where you know you're going to be using something else over here. Um, we hear so much about the CFL lights now. Do you know they contain mercury? And I don't know what they do to properly dispose of them. But I have a feeling it's probably not all that great. <laughs> but then again, when we were kids, and I don't know how many of you fit into the we category, <laughs> they had mercury in school, and we'd play with it. And look, it makes little puddles, and it rolls around. You know, Great stuff to play with. But now they tell us, oh, no, you can't do that. I don't think any of us died from mercury poisoning. Um, also, at one point, I was working in a store, and somebody broke in, broke into the safe, and the only thing they actually damaged was the fluorescent light above it. There was powder all over the floor, little tiny pieces of glass that you wouldn't find with other light bulbs. It's not a pretty sight. I really worry about these CFL lights and what they're doing. Um, this is incandescent light bulbs. 
These are a variety of fluorescent. And this is LEDs. Now, from what I was reading, they believe the LEDs is the, what's going to be available in the future. So you don't have the mercury contamination. You don't have the powder and the light bulbs and all that. But right now, it's too expensive to use these enough to make the amount of light we would need. I did find one interesting use for LEDs. <laughs> Not so sure about that one. <laughs> um, oh, my husband said, fluorescent lights can't be dimmed. So being he was my husband, I got online to check. <laughs> Yes and no. If you have the old style dimmers, you can't dim a fluorescent or an LED light, only incandescent. And that's what we have in our house is the old style dimmers. There are some available that will dim CFLs and LEDs, but I didn't go into it enough to figure out what they were um, because not all CFLs and LEDs are even dimmable. So you have to get the right dimmer and the right bulb to make it work. And that was not where my talk was going. So there's my husband. <laughs> I told him. <laughs> um, another thing, if you have kids or not, some adults like to play with them too. An easy bake oven will not bake anything if you use other than an incandescent bulb because you need the heat from the bulb to make it work. I found a couple charts um, that give information on how long you can expect the light to last, the cost per bulb, uh, you know, reading on down through. And I don't know if anybody's trying to read that. Maybe. <laughs> the second chart came from the same website, and it mentions, you know, if you turn the lights on and off a lot, it's going to shorten the lifespan of a CFL. It may or may not affect the incandescence, and apparently the LEDs don't even notice. But there's also the delay in turning on a CFL. You have to stand there and wait for it to come on, apparently. Um, we were given some one time by the local power company. We gave them away. We don't like them. <coughs> um, down next to the bottom is hazardous materials, and you'll note that there is five milligrams of mercury in each CFL bulb, it says, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but if you've got some place that's turning in thousands of bulbs, that adds up quick. Um, that's the website where it came from, just so they get their due credit. Then um, one of the next parts on the pyramid was talking about sealing your home to prevent the heat from escaping. But if you seal it up too tight, then you have bad air inside your house. And you also wind up with radon. And the solution to radon, I found out from my brother who's in construction, is to ventilate. Well, if you don't make it so tight to start with, you may not have a radon problem that you need to ventilate for. So again, it's one of those things you have to weigh to see which is the advantage. If you live in an area where there is no possibility of radon, which I don't know, I've never been able to find out if that exists, then you don't need to worry about it. You can bundle your house up just as tight as you want. <clears throat> Several things about water keep coming up. You know, I have a cup up here because I have a cold. Um, your hot water settings. I found out that HUD for senior housing says the water should not be more than 110 degrees. More efficiently for most homes, it's usually around 120. But if there's some reason why you need a lot of hot water, you might be better off setting your water heater at 130 or so and then not having to heat so much of it later. Because if you're at 110 and you have to put it on the stove to boil, every five minutes or whatever. You're just raising the temperature that much more where you might be better off just doing it in the first place with the water heater. Uh, let's see. Um, 
Does anybody know what this is? This is. <laughs> it's your lint filter. But do you know what it actually is? It's particles of your clothing. So if you wash your clothes and dry them every time you wear them, you're actually doing more damage to your clothes by the washing and drying than you are from the wearing. When I was growing up, my mom said we had to we had to wear our clothes twice. Well, first grade, you can do that because mom says so. But along about second or third grade, when you begin to realize that everybody else has got different clothes on the next day, why am I still wearing the same ones I had on yesterday? OK, mom, how about we do this? I'll wear my clothes twice, but not two days in a row. Aha, it worked. I talked her into it. So in my closet hangs clothes. And there is a colored hanger hanging there, which says everything to the right of that colored hanger has been worn once and waiting patiently to be worn again. Everything to the left of it is clean. Hasn't been worn yet. And then there's a white hanger way on the end. Those are the empty hangers that are waiting for the clothes to come back. This picture isn't too good, but do you have any idea what that is? Probably nobody does. That's the effect of your wash after you've had four cats sleeping on your bed. <laughs> it's fur. Um, another way is, you know, a lot of times you throw in three or four pieces of clothes. You don't bother to check your water level, and it's still on high from the last full load you did. You've just wasted probably half of the water. And somewhere here, I don't have it on the slide. The average top loading washer uses 40 to 45 gallons of water per load. So if you only have a couple of small things and you turn it down to half that amount of water, you've just saved yourself 20 to 30 gallons of water. Top loading, um, that was top loading. Front loading, it said, uses 15 to 30. I'm still not convinced they, they do that good. People say they do. I haven't personally experienced one, so I don't know. You have top, uh, front loading and you think it really? But as far as the cleanliness of your clothes, it does just as well. Because I soak stuff a lot of times. Uh, okay. Our daughter has one. and It's, let's see, the washer's bright red and the dryer's bright green, I think. Looks like Christmas in her laundry room. She got a good deal. Deal. They were both open box, so she's whatever. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, appropriate water temperature also helps. There's usually no reason to be washing your clothes in hot water. Again, that's something that's going to wear them out faster. Uh, cold and warm, depending upon what you're doing, usually works just as well. Uh, like I said, what I have a tendency to do is soak at least the whites put everything in, walk off and leave it for a couple hours and just let it soak there in the appropriate water level. And uh, most everything comes out. I very felt a few times if I had something to worry about. Dishwashing. People have dishwashers. I don't. I'm not convinced that you can get as many dishes in a dishwasher. And um, it said it uses four to six gallons of water for a dishwasher to do a load of dishes. One day I had a particularly lot of dishes, so I stacked them all up as they were clean. You can see the dirty water on the left, or right. <laughs> it's on the right. Then I restacked them on the stove. There are some plastic containers that I don't know would go through a dishwasher. There's a couple larger things that probably wouldn't have fit in the dishwasher. But even so, that's about four gallons of water. Yeah, it's dirty, but it's, it's about four gallons of water. I don't think a dishwasher could have done all those dishes. I still would have had to hand wash some, which meant I would have used what was in the dishwasher and then more water beside. But it's a personal opinion. Um, one thing, dishwashers will sanitize your dishes. That means it kills all the good germs as well as all the bad ones. And right now I have a cold, and 
maybe it would be a good idea, but my husband already has it, so what good would it do? You know. <clears throat> now we're getting into toilets, which, of course, is still underwater. <laughs> it didn't come out right. This is an automatic toilet with the sensor up there. One of the things that I brought up the other night at the Freeview, which our daughter had told us about earlier, was if you have a small child and they sit on one of these toilets, it's probably going to flush while they're sitting there. And I kept thinking there must be some way to avoid having that happen. And they said, if you hang this piece of paper over this type, it doesn't work on all of them, but over that type, it will prevent it from flushing. And as I told Paul the other night, I embarrassed him by telling him, <clears throat> telling the little story. He apparently took Alexa to the bathroom. That's the little one. <laughs> and she's in there screaming, toilet paper, paper, daddy, paper. And he's got paper all over everything. And she's still, you know, paper. <laughs> she wanted him to hang a piece of paper over that because she knew mommy did it. And daddy didn't know what was going on. <clears throat> But while we're talking about toilet paper, there was a theory several years ago that, I thought this was the right one, that if you buy double ply paper and rewrap it on an extra toilet paper roll so that you have two rolls of paper, supposedly it was supposed to save some money or save some paper or something, I don't know. But if I go to your house and I use this much paper normally, and you've split it in two, I'm going to use this much paper, right? So if you've just wasted hours re-rolling toilet paper, I never did understand that was the dumbest idea I think anybody ever came up with. But yeah, it's like, really, I'm still going to use the same volume of paper. The state of Michigan in their rest stops has some of the world's cheapest toilet paper. So to get about the same bulk, I need about this much. <laughs> it's like, really? Okay, whatever. Have fun. So the state of Michigan is wasting money by buying that cheap stuff. Another thing we were talking about regarding toilets is the little seat covers. On those toilets, if you put the seat cover in the normal way, which, as I understand it anyway, and you do have to be careful with all these little gathering places, if you put it on the normal way, that little flap, which doesn't want to let go, is in the water so that when you flush, it all goes down the drain. Well, you put it on the seat, and you go to turn around, and it flushes, and it's gone. What I have figured out and probably others have too, take this little flap and pull it to the front. Do your whatever you want to do, and then just toss it in the toilet. And it, it doesn't get caught in the water stream if it goes off before. Of course, if you've hung this over the toilet uh, sensor first, then you don't have that problem anyway. By the way, this is the beginnings of a craft project. You don't have to throw them away. At Christmas time, our grandson got, um, well, 12 little mini pinatas full of candy. That's what they were. They were toilet paper tubes. <coughs> uh, let's go on with this first. Okay. A lot of times when it doesn't flush properly, there is a button. I don't think there's any that don't have a button on. But this is in a hardware store at home because apparently people didn't know how to flush the toilet if it didn't flush automatically. So they put up this sign, and sorry it's not better, but if you need to flush the toilet, please push the button located next to the sensor. I've seen those signs a few other places. Oh, I might have them out of order. This is a toilet in a Walmart in Cadillac. Is that an auto-flushing toilet? Looks like it, doesn't it? No, it's not. It was at one point, and they apparently had to repair it, but there's a whole line of them, the whole bathroom's like that. 
they've taken all the auto sensors out and put the levers on the toilets, but with the seat up to go, you can't see the lever. So you turn around and leave and it doesn't flush. Why is it not flushing? It's not automatic. I've never understood whether these are foot pedals or hand pedals. <laughs> because it's the kind that's on the back of that previous toilet where you expect you're going to gently push it with your foot. But it's about this height. And surprisingly, yes, I can't get my foot up there. <laughs> but I've never quite figured out if you're supposed to use your foot or your hand. <clears throat> this is a little rhyme I heard on TV many, many years ago. You don't need to flush your home toilet every time you use it. It depends on what you've done. Um, another thing I came across is government studies have shown that sinks with measured water flow in public bathrooms waste water. If you've ever seen one like this, you push the lever down, it starts running, and it runs until whatever length of time it's been set for. A lot of times you've washed your hands, you're drying your hands, and you look over and the water's still running. Well, obviously it's wasting water. <coughs> um, this is kind of long and involved, but it's how to determine the flow rate of a faucet in your house. You put something under it, turn the water on, time it for 10 seconds, shut it off, measure how much you have, multiply it out, four cups being a quarter of a gallon, and that will give you, you know, multiply it by six and gives you how many gallons per minute your faucet is using. Now, excuse me, we were in a motel, I think in Louisville, Kentucky, but it doesn't matter where, the water flow in the bathroom was so slow that, you know, you're standing there, it's a dribble on your toothbrush, and you really can't even get enough to make your toothbrush wet. So we went to Walmart, could have gone anywhere, and we bought this one, which is 1.5 gallon per minute. It says so right on the back. We went back to the hotel. We switched out the little thing under the bottom of the spigot and put this one in which was still well within government regulations. Used it the whole week we were there. End of the week comes, we take ours off, put it back in the package, put theirs back on. Ridiculous. Um, a friend said that HUD says senior housing has to have these very low flow shower heads. I tried to look it up and I can't find anything that says it's supposed to be lower than 2.0 gallons per minute. She says, now that they've cut down the flow, it takes her twice as long to get a shower because she can't get the shampoo out of her hair, and her hair is short, not like mine. You can't get the soap off your body. So how is it saving any money to put a low-flow thing like this in your faucet, or there's other little things you can get, if you're going to have to take twice as long to take your shower? She loves when she goes to her sister-in-law's house because she can take, take a real shower. Um, another thing about these automatic censoring things, yeah, it's a little hard to read. This was in a rest stop in uh, South Dakota, I believe. It's a, a, spot, a spigot that's just running. Nobody was there. We have a ghost who turns this faucet on and off. We have called the Ghostbusters, who will be here soon, to take care of the situation, and then in parentheses, at least it's a clean ghost. But it's like, okay, we know that it's doing this. You don't need to tell us. <laughs> We're aware. <clears throat> that gets into something else. Um, another thing that we do when we go to hotels and motels, and don't have to use them too often, this will stop up almost any drain, because a lot of times you don't have any way of putting water into the sink because they've taken the stopper out. This little one will work in anything that's this size. But this one, as long as it's flat, should work in, in just about anything. We take weird things with us. I have a candle because sometimes it smells kind of weird. Uh, let's see. All right. 
this is a group of canning jars, and I have one. I make my own jelly and give most of it away. Um, we kind of get into expiration dates on stuff here. The jelly that I make, I put the date that I made it, not the date that it's supposed to be good to. If you go to the store and buy things, it'll usually say best used by or best sold by sometimes, which really doesn't help you a whole lot. Expiration dates are often a suggestion. They're not, okay, if you don't eat this by, I think these say, yeah, July 19th of 2013. So they're almost a year past the expiration date. But if they've been well stored, and my husband tried one, he says, yeah, they, they're still fine. Uh, one thing that upset me, Jell-O used to come in a white grape. And we went on vacation, and we came home, and all my white grape Jell-O had expired, or had disappeared. I knew it was expired. Jell-O really never gets old. But our son's girlfriend apparently decided, oh, it's expired, we'll throw it out. Well, then we get into a generational thing. Because all the younger people, and I'm going to say 45 and younger or something like that, oh, well, that was nice of her to do that. And all the older people were saying, oh, no, you don't get into somebody's kitchen and throw stuff away. I used the white grape jello along with a blue jello in a fish bowl with gummy fish to make a cute little dessert. It's all gone. <laughs> and I never did get a straight answer. I said, if you ate it, that's OK. If you tossed it, it's not. And nobody ever gave me an answer. So I don't know what happened to it. Let's see. Um, there's some more canning jars. Generally, well, definitely. The lid that fits on the top of the jar, like this, will have to stay on there. But if you're doing a lot of canning, you can actually take this off, reuse it on another jar. For jelly, I leave it on because I know when I eat it, it's not going to all be eaten at once. But if it was peas or corn or something like that where you expect to use the whole jar full, you can take the lid or the ring off and use it on another jar and buy half as many or less of the rings. Oh, this is my better mouse trap. But is it? This is either a vole or a mole. I don't get a good enough picture to figure out which. Um, this one, I think, is the one that saw it moving in the ground and dug it up. But as you can see, there's three cats there staring at that thing, <laughs> and not one of them's trying to eat it. So I don't know if it tastes bad. I didn't try it myself either. But uh, yeah, sometimes the better mousetraps really aren't that much better, and you can use almost any term instead of mousetrap. What to do with an old car? This car was actually still running. We bought it brand new. It's a 91 Shadow. Our son is in the fire department. He said they need cars to practice on. Well, we loaned it to a friend of his, and he ran into the back of a pickup truck and kind of mutilated the hood. It could have been fixed, probably, but the age of it and the fact the fire department needed it. And I thought I'd be upset by this, but it, I didn't, it turns out. Uh, our son wasn't even there for practice that night, and we were out of town. So, But this blue shadow, that's what's left after the fire department got done with it. Another idea of how to use an old car. This is the other side of town at Petiti's garden center, and I had to take a picture, because we have an old Volkswagen, and I wanted to do something like that, but the last time our son tried to move it, it fell apart. <laughs> it's been sitting there way too long. Um, this is kind of my theme for life. You know, uh, people are, you shouldn't eat this, and then you should eat this. You know, if you followed the story with eggs, they're good for you, they're bad for you, they're good for you, they're bad for you. Who knows? 
it's okay to eat eggs, just don't eat a whole carton at once. <laughs> and if anybody thinks they're allergic to eggs, they may not be. Okay, well, I'll have to explain that one. I found that if I eat an egg every morning, within three weeks I start breaking out in bumps. I'm not allergic to eggs, but I am allergic to sulfa. And sulfa is put in the food that is fed to the chickens, at least commercially grown. So if you think you have an allergy problem to something, you might find it's, it's not the, in this case, the eggs. You're shaking your head. Do you have the same problem? <laughs> Oh, okay. So you're not going to touch the eggs anyway. Yeah, I don't believe in flu shots because I don't get the flu, but that's another story. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, one thing I was going to mention is I printed my notes on paper from a previous Nauticon that I had printed out something just to make myself look good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Low flow with Oh, um... We have a septic tank, and you'll see the stuff advertised, Ridex being one, I think there's some others. I came across something that said it should be impossible to throw enough stuff into your, bad stuff, into your septic system to kill all the good bacteria that's in there. The good bacteria is what you need to digest all this waste that go into the septic system. But on the other hand, you shouldn't be throwing disposable diapers and and some of this other stuff that they say you can flush, you really shouldn't be throwing that stuff in there because it just clogs up your system. Uh, back when we lived at the house before we live now, my husband said, you know, we've been living here for 20 years. Maybe we should have them come pump it just to see if there's a problem. The guy came out and he pumped it. He says, if everybody kept their septic system like you do, I'd be out of business. Well, he did go out of business, but it wasn't our fault. All right, then, okay. we, uh, I want to show you, this is the size, <laughs> this is the size bag I'm talking about, all right, your standard tall grocery bag. During a month's time, we have about three to four of these that go to recycle. We have one or two that we burn, but we don't burn the bags. And we have about two that go to a dumpster. We also have food waste, which I have no idea how much we fill up because it goes into a bowl and goes out behind the house and compost heap, which we think actually gets eaten by the local animals because we live out in the country. <laughs> but the bag gets reused until it gets in pretty bad shape. And even this one we're not going to toss yet, but it's torn here and it's, it's torn over here. We go to the recycle, we dump it in the big bin, we go to the dumpster and dump it in a lot of times, although I think occasionally he does throw them away there. And we burn the trash, we dump out the trash. So we're making good use of these because sometimes it's hard to find them. And instead, you get the plastic bags, which are illegal in some states. I've heard, I'm not sure of the list of them, but you can't use them. And I happen to have two because we picked up another one the other night. Um, when you go to the grocery store, they suggest you bring your own tote bags. And, oh, maybe a couple years ago, I thought, you know, these things get dirty. And when are they going to say, oh, your bag is too dirty to put on our belt or whatever, and you can't use it? Well, it wasn't long after that I saw part of some show, and they were asking people on the street, when's the last time you washed your bag? I'm like, oh, somebody else thought of this too. And I thought, you know, I never washed mine either. <laughs> but that's, you know, you have to be careful when you wash them, though. I think this has cardboard in so you wouldn't want to wash this. You can wipe it off with paper towel or something. Um, yes, this is a, a heavier bag that you can often use for frozen foods. I get orange juice in the little concentrated cans, and the, they go in here. 
because it helps keep them a little better. When we were at McDonald's this month, they had Go Green as their little, so there were a couple things in here I hadn't thought about. Um, my husband went to get breakfast at McDonald's this morning, and of course this had a fork and a knife in it, and I think, you know, I can understand because they're so worried about germs that they're putting them in these little packages, but it's wasting another piece of plastic and it's wasting a knife because I never used it. I don't know. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember why I had this. We were in one McDonald's. We eat McDonald's too much, I know. And a dad was telling his kid, don't take the lid from the front of the stack, and don't take the lid from the back of the stack. Take one in the middle. And I'm thinking, that is not good advice. If you take the one in the front, you're likely to touch just that one and possibly the one behind it. If you take one in the back, you're going to touch that one and possibly the one in front of it. If you take one out of the middle, you're touching that one plus the one behind it and the one in front of it. It's like, I, if you're that worried about germs, I'm not sure I want your germs. I don't know. Um, I was in the bathroom, and I went to pick up one paper towel. And because they're stuck together at the ends, I wound up with more than one. Another little thing. Plastic bags, are they reusable? Yes and no. If you've had frozen fruits, frozen vegetables with no extra stuff on them, probably you're going to be able to reuse the bag because it's not going to be dirty. If you had chicken or fish or something greasy in it, you might want to think twice because I'm not sure it's going to wash out that well. This one, a friend wrote the date on it. I use masking tape, which I've found to be just about the best thing. You write your information on it, and now I can't get it apart. You write your information, you tear off a little piece, you stick it on the bag, you stick it in the freezer, and it will tell you the date you put it in there and what's in it, because no matter how often you think, I'm going to remember what that is, suddenly, eight, six to eight months later, it's like, hmm, what did I put in that bag? When you're done using it, the tape pulls back off, and you have another bag. Um, these, I don't know if they're intended for one use. We used to think they were shower caps, but now they make them to put over pies and whatever. This one's been used two or three times. Just wash it out and reuse it. If you are taking food to a friend or to a bake sale, this came with a pie from the store, but there's no reason to throw it out every time. If you're going to be taking stuff where you want disposables anyway, just reuse it. But if you're taking food to a friend and you want a reason to either have them come see you or to go back to visit them a second time, take your prettiest china and then you'll have to go back and get it. Uh, another thing, a friend and I had a neighbor and I had a couple containers that we would take food back and forth. There was one of her and two of us. And if you make something like a standard cake, you can't eat all that. So we would put something in that container and take it to the other person, and then it was waiting to see what they were going to bring back to you the next week or something. I'm not sure these have any practical purpose, though, the little tiny pie plant pans. But I threw one in anyway. Oh, the next one was the end. And it's quarter of. Is that pretty good? <laughs> oh, I did forget one thing. Two things. I asked them the other night, what is this? And of course, the standard answer is it's a bottle of pop. In Michigan, this is 10 cents. If you find a bottle laying someplace, if you pick up change, you're going to pick up that bottle because you throw it in with what you have and you take it back to the grocery store and you get 10 cents back. And this pop is probably flat because I didn't finish it. This morning, our granddaughter, I don't, I don't know that this has anything to do with anything, she went in the bathroom, and next thing I know, she's screaming. She comes out of the room and says, what happened? I hurt my toe. Oh, 
Well, what can I do to make it feel better? An ice pack. This is a bag of rice. It's not cold, it's not hot. But you know, when I put it on her toe, it felt so much better. <laughs> so, and if anybody wants to try the jelly, it can be opened and you can use some sta somewhat stale crackers. They're not that bad. Um, the tote bags work great to put all kinds of things in because all this was in there. And unless there's some questions, did I make it interesting? Okay. Yes? Uh, um, uh, let, me, uh, let me come over and get you the mic here. For the, for the recording. <laughs> the question was, do you wash your Ziploc or reclosable bags? And also, when you're reusing plastic things like that, is there any more exposure to bisphenol A or, or things like that, or is it about the same? Or does it matter? I don't think as far as the exposure part that it really matters, because if you're going to use a new one, you might actually get more of stuff leaching into your food than using one that's been washed out. Um, like I said, as far as reusing them, yes, I do wash them, but if it's greasy stuff that's been stored in there, which just reminds me, I had a large jar that's still in the car. Um, it has cheese balls in it, and I was going to say, you know, if you use these large jars, you can use them as canisters and such like that, too. But yes, these are washed. Did I answer all of it? Uh, I have a, a, a comment that a, a friend of mine uh, studied uh, life cycles of lighting, and uh, he he found it uh, interesting and uh, disturbing that um, uh, LEDs, um, since they are designed to work for so long that the life cycle of the materials inside was just completely purposely ignored. Whereas, you know, with uh, incandescent light bulbs, for example, that don't contain mercury, um, the, the glass and the metal can be recycled. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, LEDs, um, could have been designed to be recycled when they do eventually die. Mm -hmm. But the just overarching paradigm of their design was, oh, well, you know, 10,000 hours is, you know, good enough. And then if it, en if it ends up in the landfill, who cares because it lasted so long when they, they could have actually put more thought into it and made it more recyclable than it is. And the, the more and more we, we see LEDs, and as you pointed out, it takes a lot of LEDs to generate the same amount of light. So all those tiny little things do add up, all those little pieces of plastic. Well, they, the article I was reading seemed to indicate that they're going to find a way to make them less expensive in which case they would be what everybody uses, the LEDs, as opposed to the CFLs. Or mm -hmm. the I think it's happening already. Yeah. Yeah, I, oh, I don't have my badge on. But somebody said there were some LEDs in the kit that go with the badge mm -hmm. that will make so. the lights blink and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's blinking lights. <laughs> Any more questions? Hi, thank you. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you burn stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of stuff do you burn? Papers. Just papers? Paper stuff, yeah, okay. generally. You know, like the Kleenex that I'm using a lot of, if we were home, they would get burnt. Okay. But um, anything that's paper that can be recycled, like the Kleenex box, the cracker box, those go into the recycling. How, how do you go about it? Do you? How do you... How do I go about? Yeah, I mean, how do you? Is it like certain certain? Do you put it in a barrel and bury it and burn it, or how do you? Oh yeah, my husband burns it in a barrel generally. But I mean, you can get burning permits to burn 
old lumber or you know trees that have fallen down or whatever. Of course, in the winter time up there, we don't need burning permits because everything's covered with snow. And this winter, it was covered with about this much snow. More if it was where he shoveled it to. But um, yeah, we just you know kind of figure out, OK, this is an envelope or a paper that has our name and address on it. We don't own a shredder. We throw it in the burn stuff. This is a cardboard box from the cereal or the crackers or whatever. That goes in the recycle. We used to have to separate our recycling uh, paper stuff, plastics, and glass, and metal, I think. We're, we're all separated. But now, the glass is the only thing that's separate. And we have so little of it that I have a large detergent box that the glass stuff goes into. And then that doesn't always go every week. Because you know, unless we're having spaghetti or something like that, because like say, these don't get recycled. They get reused. <coughs> so yeah, you're welcome. Anything else? Yeah, what I mentioned. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. What I started to say earlier was I have a half a gallon jar that's apparently still in the car. That's a canning jar also. It stands about this high. But we brought it filled with cheese balls. Um, I was going to show you, you know, you can reuse them as canisters and stuff. But it got left in the car apparently. Thank you.
Check, check, check. Around, because it's always entertaining listening to people banging around. Okay. Awesome. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. Let us not get carried away and think I actually do. Okay, good. <laughs> 